In any Assassin's Creed game, the stealth is definitely one of the most important aspects of what makes Assassin's Creed, well Assassin's Creed. And with the mainline games reaching double digit numbers, the stealth of each game is all over the place. I've already made a video discussing which Assassin's Creed game I believe has the best combat system, so it's only right for stealth to be up next. I'll be going over in order what I believe the best stealth system is for each Assassin's Creed game. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Let's start off with what I believe has the weakest stealth system and that is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Now it's really no surprise that the RPG games will be listed quite high up in this video. I mean after all, the game deviates from the traditional approach of Assassin's Creed and in return the stealth will of course not be as good as it was compared to the older games. Anyway for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the main culprit in my opinion as to why it's the worst for stealth is the level gating. This game took level gating to a whole new level of ridiculous. If you wanted to stealth assassinate a captain or a commander type of enemy that would be cooped up in a fortress, you just simply could not. It's a pretty stupid system knowing that if an enemy was a higher level than you, assassinating them with one single strike would not be possible and this would often alert the enemies in the area which defeats the whole purpose of being stealthy. Assassin's Creed Odyssey also lacked the tools required to make stealth have a purpose. The tools like smoke bombs and sleep darts not being in an Assassin's Creed game is another reason that I can't place these RPG games any higher. And before anyone says I hate the RPG games, well Assassin's Creed Origins is one of my favourite games of all time, so that excuse cannot be used. Anyway, Assassin's Creed Odyssey did not exactly have the greatest world for stealth too. The massive open world of ancient Greece did not align with what we've come to expect from an older Assassin's Creed title. In the earlier games, we had the luxury of being stealthy in densely packed cities with very intricate layouts, which gave us opportunities to use crowds and objects to our advantage. Assassin's Creed Odyssey's surroundings lean towards more open expanses and just massive landscapes, which made stealth seem almost impossible. I say almost impossible because there are some opportunities. So yeah, Assassin's Creed Odyssey for me unfortunately has to be at the bottom of my list. I'm sure with the next two games I discuss, you'll see a pattern of what kind of genre they are. Next up after Odyssey, we now have Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And to be quite honest, both Valhalla and Odyssey have some pretty bad stealth systems, but with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, there are quite a few things that make it worthy over Odyssey. You see, this game surprisingly had some stealth tools and even environmental stealth. I mean, yes, granted it's not at all good, but it still has it unlike Odyssey. The core gameplay of Assassin's Creed Valhalla is most definitely not tailored for stealth. I mean after all, the game is designed to portray a viking and all of its brutality, so stealth is the furthest thing that a viking should be doing. Now let me talk a bit more on social stealth as I just mentioned. When you compare social stealth from a game such as Assassin's Creed Brotherhood or Revelations to Valhalla, it's so incredibly night and day. Assassin's Creed Valhalla's quote unquote attempt of implementing social stealth was very very limited and it was a bit too simple. It's almost as if the developers included stealth as more of an afterthought. If you wanted to blend in with a crowd that's slowly walking, you'd have to walk up to the crowd, hold down the required button and then try to walk with them at the exact same speed. And the frustrating thing is that you could not walk the exact same speed as the crowd, so you'd either be lacking behind or you'd end up running into them looking quite silly in the process. Then there's the bench stealth. Gone were the days of just being able to walk up to a bench and it automatically sitting you down putting you in stealth mode. With Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you'd once again have to hold down a button to blend in. When it comes to the detection system, well that was completely broken. It was very easy to get spotted by doing the littlest of things. If you made the slightest movement, the enemy AI detects you almost instantly leaving you no time to react. And the worst thing is that there's no ways for you to just simply escape and go back into hiding once you're detected. The moment that you get detected by an enemy, you're in combat mode and there's no avoiding it. You know, now that I think about it, one of the things that really bothered me about the recent RPG stealth in the trilogy was the absence of a three stage detection system. The earlier games had it nailed down perfectly. In those games, guards would transition from being uninterested to suspicious and then finally to full on aggression. If you happened to be seen by a guard but you were not inside a red zone, they would not pay much attention to you. However, if your behaviour started to raise eyebrows, the guards would take notice, fix their gaze on you and a suspicious meter would gradually fill up until they eventually became hostile. Whereas in these newer RPG games, it feels as if you constantly have maximum notoriety. Next up after Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we have the final RPG game and that is Assassin's Creed Origins. 
Now, in my personal opinion, I believe Assassin's Creed Origin stealth is clear of Valhalla and Odyssey's, despite it not even having any social stealth. Now, hear me out. Assassin's Creed Origin stealth is most accessible and beginner friendly in the series, mainly thanks to the addition of sleep darts that you can spam freely. These sleep darts are instrumental when it comes to stealth, and it's good that Origins have this. The game also combined many of the mandatory stealth features such as simply being able to crouch, and even crouch dash between covers silently. The weaponry such as ranged weapons in Origins made stealth feel a lot more accessible when compared to the other RPG games. And then there's the detection system in Origins which is a lot more fluid. It is very heavily dependent on your location to the enemy who might spot you. However, if you did get detected by an enemy, you could most likely take out that enemy before they could even alert other enemies. In fact, it may have been a bit too broken because you could barely get detected. Now, when it comes to the Hidden Blade, this could be a bit annoying at times because to progress with it, you would need to upgrade it over time. But when compared to Assassin's Creed Odyssey, it offered a much better chance for a one-hit assassination. The missions in Origins were definitely a lot more stealth oriented when compared to Valhalla or Odyssey's. There's also the inclusion of additions in the skill tree that can further help with stealth. So yeah, while Assassin's Creed Origins stealth may not be as enjoyable to some as the older games in the series, for me it's definitely better than the other two games after it with Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Valhalla, but the stealth system is unfortunately not better than any of the games mentioned after in this video. Moving on from the RPG trilogy, we now have Assassin's Creed 3, and some of you may be kind of surprised to see Assassin's Creed 3 this high up. Well, Assassin's Creed 3 made a lot of noticeable changes when it came to pure stealth and occasionally overlooked the importance of social stealth. The thing with stealth in Assassin's Creed 3 is that you can clearly tell it's not the main focus of the game. That to me would just belong to the straight up combat as a whole. So that just leaves stealth there pretty much as an option. The game gives us a selection of stealth tools and abilities such as the rope dart which is one of my favourite tools in any Assassin's Creed game. There's the crossbow too and even just being able to whistle which makes it great for being able to use stealth in the way that you play. One key feature that was added to Assassin's Creed 3 that made stealth quite good is the stalking zones. These zones gave us a nice selection of where we'd like to blend in, whether that be through foliage such as bushes, tall grass and even haystacks. This new addition to the series fully improved on what our toolkit would look like for taking on missions and stealthy assassinations. One thing I did not really like in Assassin's Creed 3 was the removal of the recruit system that we had from the previous Ezio trilogy. These recruits practically allowed you to use stealth in such an innovative way. You could take out guards without them even knowing you were there, and this was all thanks to the assassin recruits. Another thing that I didn't really like was the AI in the game. It was way too unpredictable and would often require you to just get fed up of attempting stealth to end up to just go killing them with your sword instead. Oh, and a major thing that makes stealth not as good in this game is the setting the game takes place in. It throws you into the midst of an American revolution with battlefields and gun blazing soldiers. If you're a new player watching this and you were thinking on how you would approach Assassin's Creed 3, whether that be stealthy or just full on combat, I would recommend playing it as if stealth is not even a thing. That's not to say that it's bad at all, it's just not the game's main focus. It's the same thing with Assassin's Creed Liberation, which is pretty much the exact same gameplay as Assassin's Creed 3. While there may be a selection of different tools and weaponry, it's similar enough to be considered the exact same as Assassin's Creed 3 in terms of stealth. So yeah, Assassin's Creed 3 for me would be this low in the video. Now moving on from Assassin's Creed 3, we have Assassin's Creed 1. This was the very first game of the entire franchise, so you'd assume the stealth would be quite bad, seeing as there was nothing to base it off. But no, it's actually not that bad. I'd say the stealth in Assassin's Creed 1 served its purpose, and that was to just simply work. For a game that came out in 2007, the stealth side of it was surprisingly done quite well. It functioned flawlessly and immersed you completely in the game. Of course the reason it's here in the video is because most of the games after Assassin's Creed 1 further expanded on the stealth that Assassin's Creed 1 built and polished it quite well. Anyway for Assassin's Creed 1, the stealth felt very consistent and you could rely on it quite well. The implementation of the first social stealth and hiding in concealed locations made it operate in a functioning manner. Social stealth to me is very crucial in an Assassin's Creed game. It's one of the pillars of the franchise and is what makes a great stealth system. 
The idea of social stealth all the way back in 2007 when the game was first released was still fresh at that time and it was also in its developmental stages. So this is why you should not really be overly critical of the stealth in this game. It introduced things such as haystack assassinations, rooftop assassinations, ledge assassinations and the old fashioned just walking up to an enemy from behind and stabbing them with a hidden blade. This all came from this game and is a staple for the name Assassin's Creed. If you've seen my video where I ranked the combat systems in Assassin's Creed, you know I put Assassin's Creed 1 somewhere in the middle and it's the same situation with the stealth. It occupies this middle-ish spot because it laid the foundation for the rest of the series. When it came to how missions were played out in Assassin's Creed 1, it was definitely ahead of its time as it blended with stealth quite well. You could assassinate your target in a fortress, a ship or just anywhere in general and you could stealthily escape without being pursued a lot of the time. So after Assassin's Creed 1, I've gone with the next game up in the series and that is Assassin's Creed 2. Now before I continue, I have to say the next games I talk about in this video at this point all have great stealth systems. But unfortunately since this is a ranking video, I still have to determine where they go in terms of rankings. Anyway, Assassin's Creed 2 stealth is further expanded upon from Assassin's Creed 1 in many ways. This game brought a massive upgrade in terms of tools and options to use for stealth. The introduction of secondary weapons, alternative tools and even consumables. The social blending mechanic in Assassin's Creed 2 to me was very broken. All you'd have to do is use courtesans to your advantage to remove guard patrol from a certain area. You just simply walk and then the courtesans will follow you which will then kind of make the guards become attracted to the women causing them to just walk away with them. This would leave so much room for stealth and cause certain areas that would before be guarded to be completely empty. It wasn't just the introduction of social blending that was implemented into this game. There's also features such as throwing money to the ground luring in NPCs, improved throwing knives, smoke bombs, factions such as, as I mentioned, courtesans, thieves and mercenaries to further help you out in certain situations. The missions in Assassin's Creed 2 100% further added to stealth. I remember there was one mission where you would need to assassinate a Templar and you would do this by blending on a bench waiting for him to pass you by for you to then assassinate him. This was not the only instance as this game introduced many ways to take out a target using a stealthy approach. When it came to the detection system in Assassin's Creed 2, it was definitely improved upon from Assassin's Creed 1 and is actually even better than most of the newer games now. You see, in the first Assassin's Creed game, it was pretty hard to manipulate individual guards unless you lured them with a corpse. In Assassin's Creed 2, this changed with the introduction of the social status indicator and also a revamped detection meter. There were a lot of ways you could just take out an enemy without them knowing, whether that be with an old fashioned throwing knife, the hidden gun which may seem like the complete opposite of stealth but you can pull off some stealthy kills with it if you can time it correctly. There's also tossing smoke bombs at the ground to blind enemies for you to then go in and assassinate them and even poisoning them. So yeah, overall it's just a massive improvement from Assassin's Creed 1 and polished what the original game set but it also introduced a shit ton of new features for stealth. Now next up is Assassin's Creed Revelations. I've actually included Revelations to be below Assassin's Creed Brotherhood despite it being the game that came after Brotherhood. Anyway, the stealth for Revelations was once again further expanded upon from the previous games and it did this quite well. A lot of people may think the stealth system in the Ezio trilogy are all identical but that's not really the case. Assassin's Creed Revelations was a game that definitely expanded upon from Assassin's Creed 2. But would I say it expanded upon from Brotherhood? Well, not really. I guess the only inclusion that I can think of that was expanded upon would be the types of bombs in Revelations. There was just so many of them and that was pretty cool I guess. But when did you ever really use these bombs in stealth? Well for me, I never did. There's also the introduction of the hook blade. But once again, you don't ever use the hook blade in a stealthy situation. When it came to stealth however, there were a lot of better options to go with in Revelations. Whether that be the crossbow, smoke bomb, throwing knives or the darts. I did notice that Assassin's Creed Revelations missions were more focused on a parkour aspect rather than stealth. The guard layouts of each mission, the routes that you take as well as the overall design of each mission were very apparent for parkour and much less for stealth. For example, there's that one underground mission where you're non-stop for about 10 minutes just straight up descending a gigantic cave and you would do this by riding zip lines, parkouring on wooden poles and just climbing things in general. And this was the case for a lot of the missions as it often involved you going underground. It felt a lot more cinematic than Brotherhood where the developers wanted to show off the missions using cool looking chase sequences or parkour sequences rather than a fully fledged Assassin's Creed stealth mission. 
I will say there's one mission where you disguise as a Janissary and you infiltrate their camp using stealth that was pretty cool. That's exactly how I imagine stealth in Assassin's Creed. Anyway, despite the mission design catering for a parkour experience, it still nevertheless has some amazing stealth aspects. It's just in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood is where the stealth truly shines. Now moving on from Assassin's Creed Revelations, we have both Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Assassin's Creed Rogue. The reason I've included both is that they are pretty much the same game when it comes to the engine, the combat, the stealth and everything else. You know for a game that is set in the Caribbean and involves pirate ships and large spaces of ocean, you'd expect stealth to be something that would not get a look at. Well surprisingly Black Flag stealth is one of the best in the entire series. It captured the certain stealth elements from the previous games and it revamped them a tad bit. Black Flag stealth is not at all similar to a game such as Assassin's Creed 2, as it focused more on concealing your identity, whether that be through social stealth, hiding in bushes and luring enemies towards you. The setting and the environment of Black Flag is what made stealth so good in this game. The focus was more towards your tools such as smoke bombs, sleep darts and the berserk darts. When it came to the sleep darts, it allowed you to simply nullify a guard's ability to detect you, leaving them stunned for a certain duration of time. This made stealth a lot easier as you could spam these sleep darts at enemies to clear a path, all while remaining undetected. The detection system of both Black Flag and Rogue is what makes stealth feel so well done. A nice feature that was added in Black Flag was the ability to slightly pop your head up when hiding in bushes. This would of course lure enemies towards that bush and from there you could assassinate them in secret. Being able to manipulate guards to your advantage further adds to how good the stealth can be. It's pretty evident by now that the stealth in both Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Rogue are on the easier side when compared to other games, which is just like the combat system too. You know, now that I think about it, Black Flag really is a beginner friendly game. It's probably the most perfect game if a new player wanted to play Assassin's Creed for a first time. I say my biggest problem with Black Flag stealth is the tailing missions. I just cannot stand tailing missions. And when I made my video talking about what I disliked from each Assassin's Creed game, I remember seeing comments talking about how tailing missions are good and I'm just impatient. Well you see there's a difference between being impatient and just straight up terrible level design. The tailing missions in Black Flag were not fun. Yeah it's easy when it comes to stealth and not being detected. But it's how goddamn long they were. 20% of the missions in Black Flag are all tailing missions and some of them are way too unnecessarily long. Now for the top 4 in the series. To be honest these next 4 are all mix and match. It was quite hard to determine where I'd place these games. So seeing as Assassin's Creed Syndicate is the 4th best is not at all bad by any means. One of Syndicate's strongest parts of stealth in the game was how the missions were designed. They were almost all created with the intention of stealth playing a massive role. Assassin's Creed Syndicate may have almost identical stealth to Unity, despite it being lower than Unity in this video, but I felt as if Unity's stealth was perfected in a way that makes it a lot more polished. The strict level checks for your characters, whether that be Evie or Jacob, was very apparent and you'd get presented with tools and weapons to use at your disposal, which each of these contained their own leveling system. For example, you could have a low level pistol and aim it at the head of an enemy, but it would not take them out with one shot. This would be due to the low level of the weapon, as well as your character as a whole being under level too. Of course for stealth, this is definitely not beneficial, seeing as only damaging an enemy in the head with a pistol will only alert nearby guards to your position, which defeats the whole purpose of stealth. The implementation of crouching as well as the cover system were nice little features that were included from Unity, and it made stealth in Syndicate as a whole feel pretty good. It's a weird one too because Syndicate also brought back key features such as whistling to lure guards in and also being able to pick up and move bodies which was something that was not in Unity. However what truly shines in Syndicate is the inclusion of the black box missions. This was of course somewhat inspired by the Hitman franchise. These black box missions gave you the flexibility of choosing how you'd want to eliminate your intended target. Options such as distraction methods, hidden entrance points, talking to NPCs and just unique kill methods were all given to you as ways to achieve your goal. The game also gave you a lot of unique tools to use in stealth. There's the throwing knives, smoke bombs, stun bombs, voltaic bombs which is one of my favourite tools. It's like a smoke bomb but instead of the smoke, it zaps nearby enemies with bolts of electricity. And there's also the berserk dots which for stealth are kind of a staple by now. 
Putting enemies to sleep using them can be implemented in such a strategic manner that allows for perfect stealth opportunities. This game also exclusively introduced kidnapping which at first seemed a bit strange but it's actually a nice little feature to use. For stealth it was good because you could gain access to restricted areas and make social stealth a lot of fun to do. Of course there's also the weird EV invisibility thing which kind of hindered parts of the game for me simply because of how out of place it seemed. But overall Syndicate stealth for me is a solid pick. It's almost like Unity stealth but it's also not at the same time which now that I think about it is kind of weird to say. Ok now this one is a bit of a reach, although at the time of me making this video, Assassin's Creed Mirage is not even out, so this is pretty much a prediction of where I think the stud system would rank for this game. From the gameplay that we've seen, as well as the news about certain mechanics to the game, I'd like to think that Assassin's Creed Mirage could have one of the best stud systems in the entire franchise. Now of course I could be completely wrong depending on when you're watching this video, but hey, where's the fun if I didn't include such an outrageous take in a video? The return of black box missions is something I'm quite looking forward to as it was missing for quite a while. I mean yeah it was in Valhalla's DLC but that was complete ass in my opinion. The tools that Assassin's Creed Mirage has all look perfect for stealth. There's a return of blow darts which can either kill an enemy, put them to sleep or turn them berserk. There's also throwing knives, traps and smoke bombs as well as others that I can't really recall at the top of my head. There's also the return of social stealth which in the gameplay footage it looks pretty good. One of the key reasons I believe the stealth in Assassin's Creed Mirage will be good is purely based on the setting of the game. 9th century Baghdad with all of its round city glory and the district seems like the perfect playground for stealth gameplay. The very compact and dense buildings just make stealth seem very apparent as there would be quite a lot of ways for us to use stealth. Whether that be blending in with crowds, sitting on benches, hiding on rooftops, haystacks and so much more. So yeah, Assassin's Creed Mirage is a game that I predict will have one of the best stealth systems. If I'm completely wrong, you can come back to this video when the game has been released and then laugh at me in the comments below. Ok now moving on from Assassin's Creed Mirage and that wild prediction, we now have Assassin's Creed Brotherhood stealth as a top 2 in the entire series. First off, I'm a huge fan of how this game showcased stealth. From the game before being Assassin's Creed 2, it definitely took the stealth aspects of that game and all the working features and completely revamped it and elevated it in a way that makes it significantly better. The introduction of the crossbow made this weapon become your best friend for stealth. I remember it being so broken and perfect for stealth. It's almost as if you did not even need to use your hidden blade at times, when all you could do is strike at distance with the crossbow. All of the enemy types, whether that be the regular to the large brute, can all be one shot with it, all whilst maintaining how stealthy you are. It also helped that the crossbow could carry up to 25 bolts, making it almost never ending. There's also the introduction of assassin recruits, which was perfected to a T in this game. You could often always never get spotted when you're fighting enemies, all because your assassin recruits would do everything for you. Now the mission designs in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood are all incredibly well suited for stealth. For example, there's a mission like the one where you must infiltrate the fortress to rescue Bartolomeu's wife, which places a strong emphasis on stealth. There's even the Leonardo War Machine missions which I believe all incorporate elements of stealth into each one. Even in the Banker mission which I personally did not like. The central theme of that mission focused on stealth. So in essence, it's pretty clear by now that the developers crafted each mission in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood with a strong emphasis on making stealth the primary aspect of the gameplay experience. The tools that were given to you were widely improved upon from Assassin's Creed 2 and they were all incredibly versatile. One of my favourite features is the ability to throw I believe 5 throwing knives at the same time which would often allow you to not even engage in a fight because you'd have killed all the enemies already. The hidden gun also was something that I talked about earlier on in this video with Assassin's Creed 2 and it was quite massively improved upon in Brotherhood. You see in Assassin's Creed 2 it would take far too long to reload and shoot but in Brotherhood this was completely changed as you could almost rapid fire shots each time as well as it being less loud making it viable for stealth. So yeah Assassin's Creed Brotherhood for me is top 2 and is by far the best out of the entire Ezio trilogy. Ok now last but not least, we have Assassin's Creed Unity as the game for me that has the best stealth system. Everything from the setting of the game, the world design, the social and environmental stealth elements, the introduction of both crouching and even black box missions are all perfected so well in this game. Why do you think you always see Assassin's Creed Unity stealth videos on YouTube? It's the most shown Assassin's Creed game for both parkour and stealth, and deservedly so. Whilst the game itself may have a fair amount of flaws, its stealth is done so well. 
The showcase of crowds in Paris was spectacular and made the concept of social stealth and crowd blendings go to new heights. The tools that were introduced further aided stealth such as cherry bombs, smoke bombs, stun bombs and the phantom blade all helped with stealth in such a massive way, especially the phantom blade. This was a type of hidden blade that was so silent and is practically a crossbow that fits under the wrist. There's also the Berserk Blade which was the variation for the Phantom Blade that could be used to cause enemies to attack each other. The open world of Assassin's Creed Unity was created for stealth as the main focus. Now you may say parkour is the main focus, but for me, those two go toe to toe with each other and they complement each other so well. My only issue with Unity is that the movement felt a bit heavy at times. I believe if Ubisoft worked on this game just a little more, it could have reached even greater heights. Because you can see videos from amazing Assassin's Creed YouTubers such as Altair Stealth just showcase how great Assassin's Creed Unity can be. Unity also introduced the groundbreaking concept of black box missions, which laid the foundation for what could have been for the future of the series. Even more than Syndicate, Unity's stealth system offered you a lot of unparalleled control over how you wanted to take on each mission. Whether you preferred entering the sewers as your approach, a climb to your target, or just a straight up frontal assault, Unity accommodated all of your choices. The amount of entrances to buildings or underground locations that were given to you was absurd. At any direction, you could implement your own way of stealth. So yeah, for me, Assassin's Creed Unity has the best stealth system in the entire series. It was a close call between Brotherhood and Unity, but after thinking about it for a while, I just edged it to Unity. So there you have it, those are the Assassin's Creed games ranked in order of stealth. Making these videos does kind of take a while, as I often have to replay games just to get a feeling of the stealth again. But ultimately, this is what I decided on. If you haven't seen my video where I ranked combat systems for each Assassin's Creed game, I do highly recommend watching that. So yeah, with that said, I'll see you in the next one.